All right, so we're uh, doing 10.5 here, which is going to be some angle theorems. Now, you do want to make sure that you follow along with this and that you write this stuff down. Once you see the formulas, the formulas are fairly easy to use, but if you, you need these notes, you're going to need to be able to use them when you're doing your work, so that way you can start to get a handle about uh, which is which. So the first theorem that we're going to talk about is it's called on the circle. It says if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. And again, that may not make sense when you're reading it, and that's okay, but we're going to use this picture right here. So the on the circle is going to be this picture right here. So what we're going to do is let's label this first, okay? So I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to call that C. I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to call this A. And then we have a point down here, which is going to be called B. And then we have two angles here. This is going to be 1 and this is going to be 2, okay? What this theorem is saying is that because this line that B is on, it's tangent, okay? It means that if I want the measure of angle 1, that will be equal to 1 half the measure of arc A, C, B. Okay, and ACB is this, is this arc. So the reason why the C is there is to let you know that you're going around the long way. Okay, the long way around. Okay, so ACB, okay, the measure of angle one will be one half of ACB. And also it's true that the measure of angle two will be equal to one half. And now see this right here, there's angle two. So that's gonna be one half the measure of arc AB. So that will be the short arc. So essentially you're looking at the angle and whatever arc is created by that angle, by those two lines and the, and the chord that is created, that's going to be how those formulas are. So that's a really easy formula to look at. Okay, so that's the first theorem. So the second theorem, it says inside the circle. If two lines intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. So again, once again, I understand that if you're reading that, you're like, what in the heck does that mean? So follow along here, okay, so that way you can kind of see. Okay, we're using, so the middle uh, theorem is this one right here. And again, let's label this. We're going to go A right here, B, C, and D. And then we're going to call this angle 3 and angle 4. So here's what this is saying. If I wanted to find the measure of this angle inside of here, the measure of angle 3, it's supposed to be a 3. Here, let's fix that. Is going to be equal to 1 half times. Now notice angle 3 is it is created there, okay, we have an arc AB there, and we also have an arc DC. The vertical angle, the 3, is opposite of it, okay, so it's across from it. So what it's saying is, is the measure of angle 3 will be one half the measure of arc AB plus the measure of the opposite arc, which is DC. Okay, so one half times those two arcs. Okay, so if I labeled this in blue, it would be that arc plus this arc right here. Those two would give us the measure of angle three. So I'm going to change this right here so you can see it visually. The measure of angle three, that's in blue so you can see what arcs those are uh, representing. Okay, so now if I wanted the measure of angle four, that's going to be equal to one half times the measure, and in this case it will be BC, that's a B, plus AD. And again, I'll label it in red so you can see it. And again, the reason why it's these two is because we wanted angle four, so it's this arc and then the arc that's opposite of it. So one half multiplied by those two measures added up. Okay, so hopefully that clears that theorem. And the last theorem deals with outside the circle. If two lines intersect outside of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference 
of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Again, maybe confusing to read that, but let's go right into it. Let's read uh, through this. So let's label this first. This will be A, and then this will be B, this will be C, and then this right here will be D. Okay, this is when you have one tangent and one secant. Okay, and then we're gonna call this angle right here five. Okay, so that angle right here, that's the angle that we're looking for is right here. So what we're saying is the measure of angle five will be equal to one half, and now in this case it's gonna be a difference of our, of our uh, arcs here, but we always have to have the first arc, or the biggest arc first. Okay, so the biggest arc will have to be first. So in this case, it will be the measure of DC minus the measure of BD. And again, if you look at that, it's just the, the uh, angle that is going through this is forming this arc and then the major arc based on where that line touches. So it's the big arc minus the smaller arc and then times it by one half. Okay, so now let's look at this one. The next one is when you have two tangent lines. So let's label this again, A, B, and then we're going to call this C over here. We're going to need that for explanation purposes. And then we need D. Okay, same idea, we're gonna call this angle six. So the measure of angle six, and I'm gonna use a different color here, so that way we see it. The measure of angle six is equal to one half. Again, the formula stays the same. And now again, it's gotta be our bigger arc. So in this case, the measure of BCD minus, and I'm going to use a different color here, and now we got to use the smaller arc, which is just BD. So the measure of BD. So again, bigger arc minus smaller arc times one half will give us the measure of this angle. Okay, and then the last one, same idea, it's just now we have two secant lines instead. So let's label this A, B, C, D. Oh, here, let's call this something different. We're going to call this D right here, and then we'll call this E. Okay, and again, this is angle 7 now. So if we wanted the measure of angle 7, we're going to do measure of angle 7 equals, and again, it's going to be the bigger arc, measure of the bigger arc, minus the measure of the smaller arc. So we have 1 half times measure of CD, minus, and again, this is CD right here, and then we want the minus the measure of BE. Again, all these are is just formulas. They're just formulas. You just need the foldable in front of you to know which formula to use and where to start. That will really help you as we move through this. Okay, so what, what I want to do is let's go through uh, one example of each of these, and then I'll have you do one example on your own. So let's start with this top one. This top one says line M is tangent to the circle. Solve for X. Okay, so if we use our formula, our formula for the tangent is going to be the measure of this x of this angle right here, measure of angle x is going to be equal to one half times the measure of whatever arc was created. So A D B. So the measure of A D B. So now from here, there's our formula that's on the foldable. So all we have to do from here is plug in what we know. We know the arc is 228, so the measure of angle X is going to be equal to 1 half times 228, which is equal to half of 228 is 114. So it'll be 114 degrees. Okay, and again, write the formula out, plug in what you know. If the angle was given to you, then you'd plug something in here and you'd have to solve over here. Okay, so what I want you to do is do this one on your own. Hit, uh, hit pause on the video so that way you can give yourself some time to do it. And then I'll have the solution up when you hit play. So go ahead and hit play when you're ready. 
All right, so for this one, you should have gotten 236 degrees. Again, set this up. We have the measure of DEF is equal to one half of the measure of this entire arc. We're given the angle measure, so that's what we plug in for DEF. So 118 equals one half times the measure of X. We multiply both sides by two to get rid of this one half. So it's 118 times two is 236. So remember, the arc is always double of the angle. The angle is always one half of the arc. So it depends on what you're given to start with. Okay, let's look at the next example. This is with the second theorem. Okay, the second theorem uh, has a slightly different uh, formula, but what it says is that the measure of angle X here, okay, the measure of, the, of X degrees will be equal to one half times, and then what we do is we're adding one half times the sum of this part right here and this part right here, okay? So it'll be the measure of M, N, plus the measure of LO. And again, from here, just plug in what you know. So we don't know the measure of angle X, so it's gonna be equal to 1 half times 63 plus 89. So you add those two up and then take half of that, and so that's 1 half of 152. So X is equal to 76 degrees. Okay, once again, I want you to do this one on your own. Hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to uh, see the solution. See if you can do this one on your own. Okay, so for this one, again, set up your formula. You have uh, the angle of, L of JIM is equal to one half of this arc, JM, plus uh, this arc, KL. So now I plug in what I know. I plugged in 143. I plugged in 130 and I have an X. So now I just solve for X. The first thing I do is I have to get rid of this one half. I get rid of it by multiplying both sides by two. That cancels out the one half. So you end up with two times 143, which is 286, equals what is left over here, 130 plus X. Minus 130 from both sides. That cancels that out. You're left with X equals 156. Okay, let's look at uh, this example down here, we're going to do the right one and then I'll have you do the left one on your own. So for this one right here, uh, we are given the angle here. So let's write out what the formula would be. It's going to be the measure of angle I is equal to one half times, and it will be the measure of the bigger arc, which is FG, minus the measure of the smaller arc, which is JH. Okay, so now let's plug in what we know. We're given the measure of angle I is 30, so it's 30 equals 1 half times the measure of FG is our X minus, and then our uh, measure of our JH is 44. So just like on the previous example I just showed you, we multiply two on both sides to eliminate the one half. So we're left with 30 times two is 60 equals X minus 44. Add 44 to both sides, and we're left with X equals 104 degrees. Okay, so we found our missing value there. Okay, again, pause it, hit play when you're ready for this problem over here. Try and do that one on your own. It should be a little bit easier. Okay, so again, you should have started out with your formula. The measure of angle R will be equal to one half times the big arc minus the small arc. Okay, so then we plug in what we know. We don't know X. We plug in 78 for our big arc. We plug in 42 for our small arc, subtract those, get 36, multiply that by one half, and you should have gotten x equals 18 degrees. Okay, so hopefully, um, even though there's a lot in the, of material in this section, hopefully the formulas will help you use these formulas when you're doing your work. Uh, do your Edmodo quiz, and any other questions, please bring to class.